Hey guys, Brian here with Wolf's Prairie Outdoors. Today we're going to be installing the Ranger Point Precision Trigger Kit. It's a nice aftermarket trigger. It gives you a lot of good options over a standard trigger. One thing to keep in mind is, since the sear is connected by a small spring, you do not want to mess with it because if you pull that sear much at all, you're going to destroy the spring and the trigger is going to be useless because of that. So keep that in mind when you're taking this out of the pack. Do not mess with the sear or the spring. First step to installing this is we'll make sure we got an unloaded rifle. I've got my chamber flag in. I'm going to remove that. And now there's nothing in it. So what we've got to do is remove the lever first thing. Okay, so the first thing when removing your lever is make sure you have the proper screwdriver for the size. If you don't have a hollow ground screwdriver, go ahead and tape the end of your screwdriver bit. Wouldn't be a bad idea with this, but I'm not doing it. That way, if you slip, you're not going to mar your finish. And again, guys, remember, we're not in a race. Take your time with this. There's no sense in getting in a hurry and messing up your gun. Okay, I've got a tray handy. I'm going to drop my spare parts in and I'm going to pull my lever out. And now next step is removing the buttstock. So in order to do that, I need a different bit. I've already got that one set aside. And it's just one screw at the back of the upper tang. Okay, again, I'll drop that into my parts bin and then simply pull the butt stock off, set it off to the side. And now we are left with the rest of the internals. So next up, I'm going to swap back to the other bit that I had. And I'm going to go ahead and slide my bolt forward because I'm going to have to drop the hammer in a bit, but I don't need to remove the bolt. So slide that forward. Okay, now that my bolt is forward, I'm going to depress my lever trigger safety and simultaneously push the trigger and hold the hammer all together. And by doing that, I can drop my hammer safely. Now that the trigger is depressed, we'll need to remove the hammer spring, hammer spring plate. So all you do for that is push in from the side on this plate and it will pop right out. It's extremely easy. I'm just going slow because it is under pressure from that hammer. And there we go. I'll drop that in. Hammer strut spring. Now that my hammer spring and hammer spring plate are removed, I'm going to remove the hammer. So I'm going to remove the hammer support screw on the side. Okay. And that pops the whole assembly loose. I'm just going to rotate that bad boy up out of there. And now I'm going to remove the screw on the bottom for the trigger plate. And the screw on the side for the trigger plate support screw. Now guys, one thing to keep in mind is these two screws are pretty much identical, except one is a little longer. Remember that the longer screw goes on the bottom of the rifle, the shorter screw goes on the side. I always try to set my screws in order as to where they come out in the rifle in my parts bin. That way I know where everything goes when I put it back. Now that these three screws are removed, this little guy should just come right out. Depending on the age of your rifle, rust and whatnot, corrosion, it may take a little coercion to get it out. Don't worry about it. Just tap it lightly, it will come out. Now, all we have left to do is take this pin out that is retaining the trigger and sear. I'm gonna grab my block here and a punch. There's really no pressure on this, so it should just push out. And I'll push it out this way so you guys can see. It literally just fell right out. Nothing to it at all. And there are my trigger and my sear. Now, let's take a closer look at these two triggers. Okay guys, here's a comparison of the stock trigger and the Ranger Point Precision trigger. As you can see, it's noticeably wider. Not only that, the front of the Ranger Point trigger is also serrated, so you can get a better purchase on the trigger and just have a better feel overall and know where you're at. And if you look at the side, the Ranger Point trigger is flatter and I love flat triggers. 
I think this is going to be an excellent addition to the rifle. Now we're going to install the ranger point trigger. This is also a good time if you want just to clean up your rifle. This one's basically brand new. We've put about 100 rounds through it, so it's pretty clean. I've got a lightly oiled rag here. I'm just going to wipe over things a little bit and just get some of that dust and dirt off of there that is, has slightly accumulated. Now, we're just going to reverse everything we did. One thing to keep in mind is on the inside of the trigger plate, you have your finger lever plunger retention pin. That's what the finger lever plunger rides against. So when you insert the new trigger with the sear attached, you need to make sure that you go inside that pin. Makes it a lot easier and it's the way it's supposed to be. Now we're going to install the trigger. You want to make sure the sear goes over that pin, like I said and you want to make sure you engage the trigger spring with the right side of the trigger so you can push it up and keep consistent pressure on it and then it can be easier to insert this pin from the back side so that you can see as you're going once you get it lined up it takes a little finagling sometimes but you can do it You just have to work it through multiple layers and then it goes. And now it's in there and we're set. Now one thing to keep in mind is without the pressure of this trigger and trigger spring being in there, that pin would just drop free. Additionally, you don't need anything holding it on the sides because it is a captive pin. Once you install the trigger plate in between the sides of the frame, it is in there. It's not coming out as long as your trigger plate's not dangling loose. So now we'll just reinstall in reverse. So I'm just going to drop this down on here and push it back together. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. The locking block could slide potentially, so you wanna make sure that is, actually I'll show you. This is your locking block. It holds the bolt in place, so you wanna make sure that this is all the way down. You don't want it to have fallen down and get in your way. Now I will reinsert from the front, drop it down into position, get things lined up, and I'm gonna start with the longer of my two little screws at the front and I'm gonna run it backwards until I feel that catch because you do not want to risk cross-threading these smaller screws. You don't wanna cross-thread any screws. So always make sure that you're set where you need to be. Just get it snug, don't torque it down yet because you need to line everything up properly. Okay, now I'm gonna install the smaller screw on the side and just like with the other, I'm gonna run it backwards until I feel the threads align. It'll kind of drop into place and you'll feel that tactile drop when you do it's just a little bump but then you can start running the screw in and you know you're properly lined up okay next up I am going to install the hammer in order to do that I'm gonna to have to put the trigger in the firing position so you're gonna to have to depress the lever safety pin depress the trigger okay so now I'm gonna drop my hammer into place and you just want to get your holes lined up so that you can push the hammer retaining screw through. I've got this lined up. I'm going to drop my screw through. Now that it's through, I'm going to slowly screw it down. And once that's in, you can go ahead and snug up these three action screws. Some people put Loctite on them. I just generally try to keep an eye on my screws and make sure everything's tight. That way I don't have to deal with a buildup of Loctite over time as I take my rifle apart and clean it. Okay, now we're gonna reinstall the hammer spring and hammer spring plate. And to do this, I'm gonna rotate the rifle. Makes it a little easier to install at this angle because you've gotta put pressure on the spring. So one thing to keep in mind is with your hammer spring plate, there is a hole on the back that goes towards the bottom of the rifle and there is a curve that goes towards the top of the rifle. Additionally, on your hammer strut, it's just a flat piece of steel. So that's the tip of that goes in that spring plate. So we're gonna take our spring, slide it over the hammer strut. And now I'm gonna insert this slightly at an angle from the side because all I've gotta do is put that in the hole, slide it up, it's easier to use both hands for this. And I'm going to compress that spring, slide it into that groove, and 
push down on the hammer spring plate and there we go. Just takes a little finagling. You want to center it up between the sides of the tang. Notice in this slot, I've got pretty much even distribution of empty space. I did that so that it's nice and centered. I have no issues when I go to put my stock back on. So now that's the next step. We're going to install our stock. Make sure you're seated properly. I need to switch my bits on my screwdriver. Now I'm going to insert this screw through the top of the tank. It drops down nice and easily. Again, reverse thread it until you feel that thread catch. And then start screwing it down. Make sure you're good and centered so you don't mar up your finish. Tighten that bad boy down. And lastly, we're going to need to cock the rifle so that we can pull our bolt back and install our lever. I'm going to switch bits again because that one's a little bit too big for this screw. One of these days I might invest in one of the quick takedown screws that Ranger Point has. They're pretty nice and they make it where you don't have to have a screwdriver to tighten this bad boy down. All right, now, holy smokes. That is really nice. That, that feels so nice compared to a standard trigger. I got so excited about installing this trigger, I completely forgot to show you one of the huge advantages of installing this trigger. This is my dad's 1984 model, 1894, 357 Magnum, and this is standard on all Marlin rifles. You've got this lovely trigger flop where that thing can move all about and I don't know if you can hear that, but when you shake the gun, the trigger moves. So if you're going through the woods and you're on a deer hunt, that would get really annoying when you're trying to be quiet. So the nice thing about that trigger and sear being engaged with a spring, there's no trigger flop. It's not moving all over the place. That's where it's at. It's ready to go nice and quiet, just like it should be. I'm really liking the way this rifle's turning out. I love these upgrades. I can't wait to get the rest of the stuff installed. Be sure to check the description below. We'll add more links to the description for this series as we do the rest of the installations and let you know how things are going. And if you like what you see, give us that big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Have a good one, guys.